Hello everyone, Victor is here, your organic chemistry tutor, and today, instead of talking about a specific reaction, I want to talk about more of a trick or a technique that you might find very useful in your class. We, organic chemists, love organic structures, and if you like organic structure, put a ring on it. That means that, in many cases, on the exam, you're going to see some sort of a cyclization reaction, where you're going to be doing the reaction intramolecularly, and that going to result in some sort of a cyclic compound. Well, the biggest problem that I see a lot of students have is how to exactly draw that cyclic compound, and today we're going to talk exactly about that. So here I have a reaction, and I've got a negatively charged oxygen right over here, and I also have the iodine right here. So the oxygen in this case is going to be my nucleophile, while the carbon attached to iodine, this one, and if I have a nucleophile and an, an electrophile inside of the same molecule, they are bound to react with each other. So in this case, my oxygen can easily attack the carbon with the iodine, displacing the iodine over here in an SN2 reaction. But now we have a problem. How exactly am I going to draw the product of this intramolecular SN2 reaction? Well, the easiest trick that I can think of is going to be by numbering my atoms. So typically, I like to number my uh, atoms from the nucleophile to electrophile, although it really doesn't matter how you do it. So I will start by numbering 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, just like that. Now. I'm going to make a five-membered ring with an oxygen. So what I'm going to do, I will draw an oxygen and then a five-membered ring as such. Then the next step is going to be to renumber my ring over here. So I'm going to start with the oxygen. One, two, three, four, and five like that. So oxygen used to be number one before. It is still number one. The electrophile this atom over here used to be number 5, it is still number 5, and we can see that we have created a new carbon-oxygen bond between atoms number 1 and atom number 5. Now, the next important thing here will be to dress my molecule up with everything that I have here. So, I do have in this case a methyl group on carbon number 2, which means that I'm going to show the methyl coming of the carbon number 2 as well. And there you have it, this is your molecule. Now, here is another slightly more complicated example. In this case, what's going to happen is sulfur is going to attack the carbon of my epoxide, opening this epoxide ring like this. If I needed to draw the product in this case, then I'm going to use the same approach. I'm going to number my atoms starting from the nucleophile, which is sulfur, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6 like that, and that means that I'm going to be making a 6-membered ring. So what I'm gonna do, I will draw a 6-membered ring with sulfur, so sulfur, and then enough atoms to finish up the 6-membered ring like that, then I'm going to number my atoms, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. I will remind myself that I've made a bond between carbons 6 and sulfur 1, or atom 6 and 1, if you want to put it this way, then I'm going to dress up my molecule with the rest of the groups that I have on it. So on carbon number 2, I still have this methyl group over here, which means that I'm going to add the methyl group to carbon number 2, such as that. Then I'm also seeing that on carbon number 5, right over here, I still have a connection to this oxygen, which means that coming off my carbon number 5, I'm going to have an oxygen. And since we broke the bond between carbon 6 and the oxygen, this oxygen is now going to have a negative charge. And that gives me my molecule. Now, here is another example. In this case, I have an alkene and I have an OH group in my molecule. If I were to protonate the alkene like this, I would end up with a tertiary carbocation that would look like that. If I were to protonate the OH, I will show it like that, then I'm going to end up with a protonated alcohol that would look like this. 
Now, from the purely stability perspective, my protonated alcohol on the bottom is more stable. It has full octets around all atoms, we don't have any carbocations or any unstable intermediate or any unstable um, parts of the molecule like a carbocation, anything of that sort. It's significantly more stable. But the problem is, my leaving group, my uh, H2O+, is sitting on the primary carbon, which means that even though it is a good leaving group, it can not easily dissociate giving me a carbocation because that carbocation would end up being a primary carbocation. So that essentially is a dead end, which means that I need to keep on investigating the first one uh, where I formed the carbocation. Now, if I look at my carbocation, we know that carbocations are incredibly electrophilic, which means that they're going to try to react with whichever nucleophile we have around. And the closest nucleophile to us, the most reactive nucleophile in this particular case, is going to be the OH within the molecule itself. So I can do a reaction between this uh, OH and my carbocation, which again, due to the fact that this is an intramolecular reaction, going to give me a cycle. So how am I going to draw a cycle? Well, I will number my atoms from the oxygen. So I have one, two, three, four, five and six, so that's going to give me a six-membered ring. In order to draw that, I'm going to start by saying I have an oxygen and then enough atoms like that to give me a six-membered ring. I will number it. So oxygen is number one, two, three, four, five and six like that. In the course of this reaction, I made a bond between oxygen and carbon number six, so that bond is right there. Now, the rest of my groups on oxygen, on my atom number one, I still have the uh, hydrogen, I still have this H over here, so I'm going to draw this H like this, and because of that, my oxygen is going to have a positive charge. Then, the next thing that I'm seeing, I have this isopropyl group that is connected to carbon number three, which means on the carbon number three, I now need to add the isopropyl group. Then, I also see that I have a couple of methyl groups on carbon number six. So I'm going to add those methyl groups onto carbon number six as well, just like that. And that would give me my cyclic product. Is that a final product? Well, not, not, not in this particular reaction. In order to make it final product, we need to deprotonate that. So I can use, let's say, HSO4 minus that one going to come in, pull this proton off and give me the actual final product that looks something like that. And of course, since uh, predicting the actual final product was not really a point of this video, um, we can stop just right over here and that will be just fine for our purposes. But the point here is that whenever you need to draw your cyclic molecule, your cyclic products, always number your atoms first. As I've mentioned before, I personally prefer to number from the nucleophile to my electrophile, draw the stem for the molecule um, with the number of atoms that you need to have there, then number them, and then dress your molecule up with other groups that you might have on the molecule, and this way you are going to get the correct cyclic product every single time. Use this trick on your next homework or test, let me know how it goes in the comments below. Of course, if you have any other questions or suggestions for videos, let me know about that in the comments below as well. Hit the like button if you learned something new today. Subscribe to the channel for daily organic chemistry updates. Watch this video next and I will see you tomorrow.